Next up, wave 2.0, Olivier. So one billion people like safe access to drinking water. And as a result, 2.6 million die each year, mostly children. But the good news is that a large fraction of this population actually live in coastal area where they have access to an incredible source of energy, ocean waves. And that's what we do at Resolute Marine Energy. We have developed a solution called Wave 2 that use ocean waves to drive a desalination system to provide fresh water for these people. So the way it works is actually quite simple. First, you have a paddle attached to the bottom of the sea that moves back and forth with the waves. We extract energy from the wave and we use it to pressurize seawater that we send to the shore where it is used to directly drive a reverse osmosis process. So the main feature of our system is that it uses only ocean waves to produce fresh water. It has no electricity in the manufacturing process, but despite of that, we can co-generate electricity for the need of our local communities. It is clean, modular, and it's perfectly uh, economical, of course. The technology has been, developing, uh, has been developed over the last 10 years thanks to a combination of grants, mostly from the US Department of Energy and private investment from exceptional investors, there are some of them in the room. We, uh, the technology was designed having developing countries in mind uh, with, um, for, to adapt to customers who have little or no infrastructure. So the example shown here, we actually assembled the device on the beach and it took us just two hours to deploy the wave energy converter and produce electricity in that case. We are starting in Cape Verde and hope to our first commercial pilot by 2021. Cape Verde is an ideal place for us. It's one of the driest countries in the world. It has no river, no rain, limited aquifer. Most of the water is already desalinated. And because it's an archipelago, they have to import all the oils to drive the desalination system. So as a result, the cost of water in Cape Verde is one of the most expensive in the world. And we believe that at commercial size, our plant could produce water at a third of the cost, which make it, of course, very interesting for our customers. We are looking at 9 million to bridge the gap between where we are now and our uh, pilot in Cape Verde. If we are successful, we expect uh, an exit by 2023, which promise, which would bring a very interesting return for our investors, but more importantly for Seoul MIT, who would uh, provide the need of water to 270,000 people, and we'd have offset carbon emission by an equivalent of 5,000 cars taken off the road, which is very nice. So MIT Solve is very important for us because an endorsement will definitely help us get this investment, but also we are interested in partnering, you know, to kind of use our technology in a broader context, such as water in the circular economy or the green economy. Thank you. Questions? What scale wave do you need to reliably um, have the process? And is that at all restrictive in terms of where you place these systems? You mean the wave, you yeah, say? Wave height. Wave, oh, height. wave height. So we are targeting uh, moderate wave height, not too small, not too big. So in terms of wave height, that would go between 0 .0 0 0.5 meters to 3.5 mm -hmm. meters uh, of wave height. I mean, the wave is characterized by its periodicity and its wave height. But we are kind of looking at. 20 in the range of 20 kilowatt per meter, if you know the kind of wave you energy. Have to go very far offshore to get that? No, and that's the whole point of our technology. We choose the wave energy technology that can be deployed near the proximity of the shore so that it can be easily maintained in our remote location. So we are targeting depth of eight, nine meters. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are talking about, like, depending on the location, 100 meters offshore. So not deep sea. OK, I have one more question. Is Since you're extracting wave energy, are you going to change the morphology of the beach? Uh, no, we don't think that we are going to have such an impact. That would be great, I think. It means that we extract so much energy. But the device themselves uh, extract just 10, 20, 20% 20 of the incoming wave energy across the width of the system. So that's not. What is the key? obstacle in building these plants? You say it uh, takes uh, two hours to deploy them, but mm. um, five years to build them. Oh, no, it doesn't take five years to build them. No, no, it takes, uh, our conservative estimate takes 21 months to build everything from pre-feasibility study up to the end of commissioning. And the longest time is actually the site characterization studies where you need to actually measure the wave energy, uh, measure the water quality, 
the bad symmetry is a topology, and you need to do that over a period of one year so that you can take into account the effect of seasonalities across one year period. So that's 12 months. Then the construction is like something like six months in our estimate, so it's not too, too long. So you could speed that up by having more resources on the, on the monitoring of the coastal conditions? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or deploying in the same place, and that's our plan. I mean, that's our plan, for example, in Cape Verde. We are planning to do a pilot in a location where we actually could deploy 40 hour commercial size plant. So once we down this site characterization, you know, we can just continue and have them deployed next to, uh, to, to the same place. And I hope that as we learn and uh, we'll kind of fasten our customization of our technology for specific location, but yeah, no, no, it's but not five years, no. Great. Thank you very much.